Welcome everyone and thank you guys for being here. We're going to get our presentation started very soon. We're just going to wait for um, a few more people to, to log in and then we'll just get started so everybody gets. And today we're going to be talking about um, W365 versus Azure. Um, sorry, not Azure, for uh, Azure Virtual Desktop. And today I'm honored to be with Vadim Vladimirsky, the CEO of Nerdio, who's going to talk to us about Azure Virtual Desktops versus W365, so we can get a clear understanding of the product features and benefits and to help us properly identify opportunities and sell the appropriate service. So how are you doing today, Vadim? Doing great. Doing great, Wayne. Thanks for uh, having me. Awesome. It's great to have you here, too. All right. We're going to have some fun today. Um, but before we get started, let's do some housekeeping. Um, you know, this webinar is recorded and will be available for viewing on demand. But please make sure you stay to the end. Uh, we have some interactive activities and some special offers for you. Uh, so if you have questions during your presentation, please type them in the question box in your GoToWebinar uh, control panel. And I may bring them up during the presentation. Um, and we'll also have some time to uh, for questions at the end as well, too. So um, the presentation will be sent to all people who attend and people who've registered. And they'll also get a copy of the slides of the deck of the presentation as well. So um, as time changes, you know, solutions and softwares must evolve. And Microsoft is very good at that. But sometimes it can cause some confusion, especially when some of the products seem to be similar. So the question becomes, uh, when is, what is the best one for me to use? Uh, which one's the best one for me to sell to my customers? And what's going to make my business more profitable when I resell? So this becomes, this comes to the, the, the reason why we're here today is um, Azure Virtual Desktop versus um, W365. And today with Vadim's help, we're going to explore what is Azure Virtual Desktop? What is Windows 365? Then we'll also take a look at the product, how products match up against each other. And we're going to do it in a fun style of kind of like boxing. And we'll have round one. We're going to take a look at their architecture and see how they stack up side by side. We're going to take a look at round two and the different types of features that they have and how they how they compare. And of course, everybody wants to know about the pricing. So we're going to take a look at that and see how they actually stack up together. And we're also going to be able to cover you know, what is going to be best for your customer. And we'll go over a couple of use cases. And of course, we're going to show you guys how to pick the right solution. So before we get started, we're just going to do a quick poll amongst uh, amongst the people attending the webinar, just to find out what is your knowledge or your your about you know um, Azure Virtual Desktop and W365. So we're going to start off with the first question: um, Is are you familiar with Azure Virtual Desktop? So the poll is open. Jump in there, and make your vote. And let us know how you feel about Azure Virtual Desktops. Perfect. Let's take a look. So um, for the people who are attending, we have... Um, Great. Looks like we have 70% or so that are either familiar or somewhat familiar with the technologies. That's that's great. That's awesome. Okay, cool. Perfect. Thanks very much, Vinny. I'm having a hard time to see it on my screen, but thank you for um, telling me the results there. Can you... Um, let's move to the second poll. And the poll is about Windows 365. So it's a pretty much a similar same poll. Are you familiar with Windows 365? Perfect. Do we have the results on this one? Looks almost identical. Oh. Um, yeah, about 70% for yes and uh, yes familiar and somewhat familiar. About half half the audience is uh, somewhat familiar with uh, Windows 365. So right. despite that it's new, it looks like there is a lot of awareness out there in the market. That's, that's also good to hear. And hopefully we'll deepen that awareness today. Perfect. Yeah, that definitely sounds like fun. So we're definitely going to have a good matchup today. All right. So here we go. Let me just get back to our screens. So let's get started. And um, Vadim, we've got an incredible matchup today. And with these two contenders with, you know, ABD and W365, and due to the pandemic, the spotlight has been on ABD. Um, tell us about Azure Virtual Desktops and its rights to fame. 
Sure, sure. So, you know, I, I guess a bit, a, a minute or so of history before uh, before we dive into the specifics of AVD. Uh, but desktop virtualization has been around for, for a really long time, really since the late 90s. Uh, Microsoft has had a product or set of products that enabled us the virtualization. Uh, used to be called terminal services and eventually became RDS or remote desktop services. It's always been a feature of Windows. And it was always something that sort of had a niche use case. It was used sometimes to enable remote users to connect into a you know, corporate infrastructure. Uh, so it, it was a fairly widely used technology, but, but only for a very limited number, uh, number of use cases. So when AVD came on the scene, it really uh, was called WVD or Windows Virtual Desktop first. So for those of you that you know, hear AVD or WVD, those are completely interchangeable, exactly the same product, just the naming change, to be clear. Uh, and that came on the scene at the end of 2019. And there's many technical differences between the two products, but what, you know, what we try to do here is really distill it down to kind of the core and the essence of the most important ones uh, that make AVD different from something like RDS, uh, which many of, uh, of the audience here, I'm sure, are familiar with. And the four things are listed here on the screen. You basically have a multi-session desktop operating system that became available when WVD launched. And, and that was pretty revolutionary because up until that point, RDS was a server function. So you had to use the server operating system and make it look like a desktop. But in reality, it wasn't a desktop OS, which means the patch cycle was different. Some applications wouldn't work because they would detect that you're running them on the server. So this was really important because now it gives an end user on a AVD desktop the same experience, same exact operating system as a physical desktop. So I would say that was number one. Number two, Microsoft purchased a technology called FS Logix back in 2018. And what FS Logix enabled is taking the user's Windows profile, encapsulating it into a virtual disk, a VHD file effectively, and taking it off of the machine where the user's applications run, which means I, as the user, can log into any VM or any you know, machine for that matter, whether it's physical or virtual, and my user profile will get attached while I'm logging in. So that decouples the profile and the user from a specific VM. And that technology, uh, is pretty revolutionary, although there were other profile management technologies previously, they didn't work nearly as well as FS Logix does. So that was pretty big. Uh, then the third thing, uh, it probably, I would say the most important one, is Microsoft removed all of the infrastructure services you used to have to install, manage, and patch and maintain on your own. Things like licensing server and connection broker, and gateway servers and web access, all of those components that basically allow the user to be landed on the correct desktop are now a service offered by Microsoft as part of AVD. So it's no longer the administrator's or the MSP's responsibility, it's now Microsoft's responsibility. And the only thing the MSP has to worry about or the customer has to worry about are the desktop VMs themselves. And then finally, Again, I, you know, it seems like a, an eternity or, already that it's been a couple of years, but before WVD, licensing a virtual desktop was super complicated. You had to have an RDS license, a Windows Server license. If you wanted to run Office, you had to have a special version of Office 365 with something called SCA or shared computer activation. All of those things were different than a different unit. You know, For example, an RDS license was per user, a server license was per core, uh, you know, Windows uh, or Office license was per user per month. It, it was super confusing. So what Microsoft did as part of the release of WVD is they simplified licensing and they said any M365 suite that includes, you know, so basically business premium or higher entitles you to use all of the WVD services, including all of the software licenses, making the whole thing really easy uh, to deploy, manage, and price um, over time. So I would say those are the four main components and innovations of AVD. Yeah, actually, I think that's uh, that was a very smart play by Microsoft as well. Um, I have a question. Like, I think multi-session is huge for your virtual desktops. Do you, you know, from your experience or or you know some of the, the 
the MSPs that, that you work with or interact with, do you do you think that they're actually taking it full advantage of, of, of the multi-session? Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, um, AVD has two kind of deployment models or, or what they call host pool types. There is something called personal, which is a one-to-one, -one, one user to one VM assignment and pool, which is what takes advantage of the multi-session operating system. And I would say in the large majority of the time of the cases, multi-session is used for a very simple reason. It's much more cost effective. You know, if you're giving each and every user a dedicated VM that has a significant cost associated with it. But if you're taking one VM and you're splitting it across, you know, two, four, eight, 20 users, that's significant savings from, from an infrastructure point of view. So absolutely, I see, I see it being leveraged a lot. Perfect, absolutely great. All right, so then now we have the new kid on the block making waves and coming, you know, from the same training camp as M365 and O365 but not much is known about W365, or according to our, our users, they, they, they seem to have somewhat of a knowledge of uh, W365. So Benin, can you um, shed some light and let us know about this type of contender and you know what, what they have installed or, or what they have made sure. up for us? Sure, definitely. So, you know, Nerdio, you know, and, and, and I were fortunate enough to be involved with Microsoft Engineering on the build of this product. So, you know, a year before it was even announced and inspired this past July, we've been working with them on sort of formulating the vision and helping, uh, you know, and, and, and helping integrate it into our product. So it was, it was really amazing to see this product take shape. So let me give you, you know, a couple of market perspectives and then talk about some of the, the more specific technological components. So from a market perspective, you know, I think Microsoft's vision around Windows or uh, Windows 365 is that it is not a replacement for existing VDI solutions, including AVD, right? They're not seeing this as, hey, you know, you could do AVD or you could do Windows 365. And, you know, now we have this new thing that you should start using instead of AVD. Their perspective is we are in a new world, a new economy. People are working remotely. People are working in a hybrid scenario. The physical desktop is not as relevant as it used to be. And there's got to be a more modern cloud centric way to consume a Windows operating system. Mm -hmm. And the reason Windows 365 desktops are really called cloud PCs is because I think the name encapsulates that pretty well. So Microsoft's vision is that over time, you're going to have this growing market of PCs, Windows specifically, being in the cloud, in Azure, uh, running with the same exact experience and management tools as a physical desktop. So think of AVD as an evolution of RDS and other desktop virtualization technologies, and think of Windows 365 as an evolution of a physical endpoint, you know, laptop, desktop, et cetera. Now, how do they go about accomplishing it? Well, number one, the Windows, I'm sorry, the Microsoft 365 ecosystem, which is sort of a separate cloud from Azure. You know, Azure is consumption-based, infrastructure-related type services, whereas Microsoft 365, you know, we're all super familiar with it. it's, its Office, its Exchange, its, its, um, uh, its OneDrive, all of the services that are kind of the bread and butter of, of most MSPs. Windows 365 fits into that world. Now, that's important because it is licensed in a similar way. It's not licensed as infrastructure, it's licensed as a SKU, as a license, just like Exchange Plan 1 or Exchange Online Plan 2, there is also a Cloud PC, you know, A, B, and C uh, SKUs that we'll be looking at later. So, so I think that's a key, key distinction between that and AVD is this not an Azure service, it's a Microsoft 365 software license. The second thing is that it is all about personal desktops, persistent dedicated VMs that are assigned to each and every user and are permanently theirs. They're permanently assigned to a user. Unlike AVD, like you asked Wayne, whether people leverage multi-session, they do. Windows 365 has none of that functionality because managing a multi-session environment is a different skill set than managing just a desktop, right? And it doesn't matter whether that desktop is running in the cloud or that desktop is running on a physical device, 
the consistent user experience from it being a personal dedicated VM, just like a personal dedicated physical device, makes the, the, the management and procurement easier, I think, for, for the vast majority of the market. Along with that, we have a flat per user per month price. So with AVD, as we'll see later, it's all based on consumption. So depending on how much you use, that's how much you're going to pay. Whereas with uh, Windows 365, it works exactly the same way as Office. You buy a license, whether you assign it or don't assign it to a user, that's a cost. It's flat, it's fixed, it's predictable. You know how many users you have and how exactly how much this is going to cost you. And then the final thing to realize is that Windows 365 from an end user experience is built on the same backend architecture and infrastructure as AVD. So even though the admin and the MSP perspective of managing and procuring Windows 365 is different, as we, as we just mentioned, from an end user perspective, when they log in, if they're logging into an AVD desktop or they're logging into a Windows 365 Cloud PC, they experience the exact same thing because underneath it all, it's the AVD service powering this Windows 365 product. So think of the Exchange server in the olden days powering Exchange Online. Same thing here, AVD is powering Windows 365. Awesome. So could it be as simple as saying the, the difference between the two um, could be like AVD, you're a lot more flexible with resources versus um, you know, um, W365, you are kind of like limited to, you know, that um, that packaged um, version that you're you're taking. That, that's exactly right. I mean, if you boil it down to sort of, you know, all these things, what 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 do I care about? AVD is optimized for flexibility. Windows 365 is optimized for simplicity. So th that that's really the way Microsoft is messaging it, and that's how the product is built. It's all about making it simple to, to buy, deploy, and manage. And AVD is all about giving you all the different knobs to turn to get it tweaked exactly the way you need it to be. Awesome, perfect. I know we have um, this architecture. You want to just go over this for us and let us know um, a little bit, get a little bit deeper into the insights of W365? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, so what we see on this slide is uh, the fact that there are two types of um, Windows 365 products. There is a business cloud PC and there is an enterprise cloud PC. And from an architectural perspective, they're pretty distinct and different. Uh, so, so what you see here is, you know, at the very top, you've got your client devices, which may be sort of any modern operating system connected to the Internet can connect to a cloud PC. It goes through a Microsoft hosted connection broker and authenticates through the Azure Active Directory. Uh, nothing surprising there. But then underneath all of that, there is two types of these desktops. There is the, the simpler and the more limited business edition. And with the business edition, the desktop VMs are Azure AD joint. They are not uh, Active Directory joint, and there isn't an option, and there likely won't ever be an option for business cloud PCs to be AD joint. They're just joined directly into Azure Active Directory, and there is no management of those PCs that can be done as an admin, meaning they can be managed once you log into the desktop, just like a physical device, but it's, it's super simple. You can see there are no prerequisites. Uh, you don't need an Azure subscription. You just need a license in Windows 365, in, in Microsoft 365, and that's all you need. The enterprise SKU is a bit more flexible. And the way the enterprise SKU works is as follows. You need an Azure subscription that you as the MSP or the customer you know, obtains and, and uses. Within that subscription, you need to create a network that can have any type of routing and IP addresses that you can control as the administrator. And then the cloud PCs, when they get created, Microsoft uses a technology called VNet uh, or VNIC injection, which basically takes the network card of each of these VMs and places them within the customer managed subscription that gives the customer the ability to control the routing, control the IP addresses, the firewalls, everything that happens at the network layer, so to speak. But the VMs themselves are hosted by Microsoft. With enterprise cloud PCs, 
you are using something called hybrid AD join, which means they are joined to Active Directory, which is then synced to Azure AD. So there is more flexibility, but also a bit more complexity there. And then the management experience of these cloud PCs that are on the enterprise edition is done through Microsoft Endpoint Manager using the Intune interface to basically manage those PCs. So instead of going into the Azure portal to manage VMs like you would with AVD, for example, with Windows 365, all of that is done through Microsoft Endpoint Manager, also known as Intune. Okay, cool. So we, through Intune, we'll, um, we'll be able to manage the enterprise and the business? Version? No, just enterprise. There is no admin management interface for business cloud PCs. Okay. So then um, my question would be, when, why would I choose or who would I would offer a business um, you know, W365 versus, of course, we know enterprise. I mean, if there's, it's a big company and you want to totally yeah. manage it and full control over it, but why would I offer the uh, yeah, so it's so a great question. You know, the, the business uh, license or the business um, uh, tier edition, whatever the right the right term is, is, is really meant for small, simple environments. So, so think of the scenario where, you know, in the physical PC world, if you were to go to, you know, Best Buy or whatever the local, you know, computer superstore equivalent is and buy a PC and put it on your desk, log in, make your, you know, install your apps, and there you go, right? It's not part of a domain. It's not managed by the central IT department. It's just a standalone Windows device. That's what the business cloud PCs are. They are meant to be managed by the users themselves. Enterprise Edition is meant to really allow for that centralized administrator or MSP control of those machines through Microsoft Endpoint Manager, or as we talk about, you know, third-party tools like Nervio Manager and, and other tools like that. So businesses for small, very simple environments that need simplicity with no flexibility and no centralized administration, whereas enterprise is for still, uh, you know, for smaller environments that need that centralized administration or very large environments that just need control over the networking and, and firewalls and all of those kinds of things that the business edition doesn't provide. Awesome, perfect. All right, so are we ready? We're gonna go up to head to head and see how these products match up to each other. Hold on, let me get something. I gotta get my special effects for this. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> all right, cool. So, all right, we're going to go with round one. We're going to talk about architecture, and we're going to see how the two um, um, off the offerings stack up against each other. So let's take a look. So Vadim, please tell us, um, give us a, give a technical background of the technical architecture and how they actually stack up um, versus the, the, the W365 offerings and the ABD offerings, please. Yeah, so let, let's compare them side by side across all of these different dimensions. So just as a reminder, in Windows 365, we have two editions, enterprise and business, as we just talked about. In AVD, we have two types of deployments, personal and pooled. And if we look at the control plane, right, what's, what's the underlying technology stack running under both of those? Same thing, Azure Virtual Desktop there and Azure Virtual Desktop on the right and the left. As far as the Azure subscription, when dealing with Windows 365 Enterprise, Microsoft manages the subscription that contains the desktops, except for the networking. The networking is on the customer or the MSP to manage. With business, nothing for the MSP to manage, all Microsoft managed, which also means no flexibility, but that may be okay in, in many use cases. With Azure Virtual Desktop, as we talked about, it's all about flexibility, so fully customer-managed Azure subscription. Compute, right, so VMs themselves. Microsoft manages all of Windows 365 VMs. They are fixed cost. You have no direct admin access to those VMs. You have to manage them through MEM, through Microsoft Endpoint Manager with the enterprise, and not at all if you are on, uh, on the business edition. Whereas with AVD, you have full control, full access. You can do everything you can with VMs in Azure. Uh, it's fully flexible. From a storage perspective, like we're talking about the operating system disk, the C drive of those desktops. In Windows 365, Microsoft manages them. It's fixed cost, it's included in the license. 
no direct access. Um, and in AVD, fully flexible, you can choose SSD, HDD, premium, standard, different sizes. You have all the flexibility that you want. And also you have some more flexibility on, around backup and DR of those machines because you can control how that's set up. From a networking perspective, Windows 365 Enterprise is customer managed. Windows 365 Business and Microsoft managed, so no flexibility there. AVD, all customer managed, full flexibility. With user profiles, this is key. Remember under AVD, when we talked about this FS logics offloading that profile to some other system so a user can use any VM. Remember in Windows 365, there's only one VM per user, no need for FS logics, no complexity with storing the profiles elsewhere. So the same way a local profile in the C users folder works in a physical desktop, that's how it works in Windows 365. Whereas with AVD, you must use FS logics in pooled scenarios, and you usually end up using it in personal scenarios too. So that's a pretty uh, critical technology that you can't really get away from in AVD world. And then finally, the, the identity and the directory, you know, active directory things. In enterprise, you're using hybrid AD join, which means you need active directory to use enterprise edition. Native Azure AD is coming soon. With the business edition, only native Azure AD is supported. Active Directory is not supported. And finally, on AVD side of things, you have flexibility. You can do native Azure AD. You can do Active Directory. You can do Azure AD DS. Again, the same theme, AVD super flexible, M360, uh, Windows 365, much simplified, especially the business edition. Awesome. Uh, I do got a couple questions on this. Um, what about security? Is is it the same? Um, or like, you know, are you more secure if you're using Azure, Azure Virtual Desktop within your own network versus using, you know, like um, Windows 365 on, on the business versus enterprise? Um, do, you, do you see any security issues on, on that side or? I don't think there is any difference in terms of the security posture. It's ultimately going to depend on, on your configuration. You know, you can have a, a very secure out of the box deployment, and then if things, if changes are made that make it less secure, that certainly can be done in both scenarios. So I, I would say from a security perspective, as far as layering on firewalls or layering on, you know, endpoint protection agents, you know, like, um, Defender and things like that, it can be done in both scenarios. So from a security perspective, I would say they're equally good. Okay. And the other question I would have is um, a lot of people will be concerned about, okay, fine, um, I've set up my computer, I've set up my profile, um, I'm doing work on my, my, my you know, in, in this environment. What would happen if, uh, is it possible to lose that information? Uh, is it, you know, do, do they have backups, you know, or, what is there addition? Because is there additional stuff that um, um, you know our partners can be aware of when it comes to making sure that the information is retained on their profiles and and being and being working from a platform in the cloud. Yeah, a great question. I mean, if if you think about the Windows 365 side, think of it exactly as a local PC. You know, you have a local PC. Microsoft will make sure that it's always running. Now, well, what happens if if it crashes and and the disk disappears? It's very unlikely, you know, Microsoft does have SLAs around it that, that are pretty robust. You don't have to worry about it, but, you know, you know, ransomware or, um, you know, or user error or things like that can delete data without Microsoft service ever knowing anything is wrong because it's all happening within the operating system. So same rules of thumb and same best practices that apply to physical devices apply here, which means, you know, use OneDrive to back up all the desktop and documents and all the known folders, right? That's an out-of-the-box configuration, super easy to achieve, at least then you have versioning. You know, use antivirus, use maybe a third-party backup service to back up these machines. So nothing different about this being a cloud PC other than Microsoft will make sure that your hard drive doesn't physically break, right? So. Yeah. In, in a physical world, you have to worry about hardware failure. Here, you don't have to worry about hardware failure. But with the exception of that, everything else you still have to think about. And same thing with AVD. You know, with AVD, you have more flexibility. So you can set up 
a few other options. You can use things like Azure Site Recovery. You can use things like Azure Backup. There's a few other capabilities that can be brought uh, in, into the picture on AVD, but still, you, you need to, to think about data protection and you know ransomware protection and versioning and things like that, but you don't have to think about hardware failure. Perfect. Thank you very much. All right, so let's get into uh, round two. Don't. Sound effect. All right, here we go. There we go. Round two features. Let's get into features. All right. So, um, tell us about the IT admin experience when it comes to um, uh, Windows 365 and a uh, Azure Virtual Desktop. Yep, absolutely. So, yeah, I, th this is all going to continue along the theme of of how they're architected, and and we'll look at the impact of the architecture on the, the admin experience first, the end user experience, and then the licensing and, and infrastructure cost implications. So again, let's go through this real quick. You know, how do you manage Windows 365? Well, if you're using the Enterprise Edition, you're using Intune or Microsoft Endpoint Manager. If you're doing business, you are not managing as an admin, you're managing it as a user. Or, I mean, if you want to load your RMM agent, again, it's a physical, it's a physical machine equivalent, and that's the way you need to be thinking about it. In Azure Virtual Desktop, you can use the Azure portal or any of the existing Azure tools or third-party managers like Nerdio to manage those devices. Operating systems, Windows 10 and Windows 11 single session, so the enterprise version of Windows single session in Windows 365. And in Azure, you have both single session and multi-session as well as Windows Server, right? So we talked about this multi-session version of the desktop OS, but that doesn't mean they have abandoned the ability to use a server OS. You can still do that. And there may be applications or use cases where that's required. Image management, you know, I, I don't want to get too deeply into this, but again, lots of flexibility on the AVD side. On the Windows 365, Microsoft provides you a set of gallery images that start out, you know, with their core pieces of software. So things like Office and Teams can be pre-installed. And with the enterprise version, you can create your own image in Azure and then bring it into the Windows 365 service. So that's possible. Whereas on the AVD side, you have a ton of flexibility, build your own VM, and then use that as the baseline or the golden image for your deployment. Applications, um, you know, obviously installing manually of the applications is always an option. But in Windows 365, you can also use Intune or MEM Microsoft Endpoint Manager to deliver those apps. With business, you're treating it like a physical machine, so you got to load those apps while logged into it. Whereas on the AVD side, you can use all of the above. You can uh, install them via MEM. You can use image-based update process. You can use MSIX app attach. You can use all kinds of uh, other technologies that are available for application management. Backup and DR, with Windows 365, you're relying on Microsoft what they call service level uh, disaster recovery. So they make sure the service is available, they have some SLAs around it, but you don't have control. Like you can't say, I wanna connect at the hypervisor level and, and back up that machine. That's not open to an administrator or you know to an MSP at this point. Uh, whereas on AVD, you can do whatever you can do in Azure. So ASR, Azure Backup, any other tool that can connect to an Azure environment can be used to back up those VMs. Monitoring is done with endpoint analytics on the Windows 365 enterprise side. There isn't a built-in kind of monitoring interface for the business edition. And on the AVD side, you're typically using Azure Monitor with log analytics and, you know, again, lots of flexibility there. User profiles, we already talked about them. Native profiles stored on the C drive under the C users folder with Win365. And then on the AVD side, you're typically using uh, FS Logics or a native profile if you're doing a personal desktop. Networking, talked about this briefly already. Enterprise Edition is flexible and managed by the customer. So you have a management responsibility, but you get the flexibility in return. With business, you have no configurability. Microsoft manages the whole thing. You don't choose what IP address it uses. All of that is Microsoft provided and AVD. Obviously, you can do whatever you want. Auto scaling, you know, not really that applicable because the infrastructure size is fixed and is licensed on a per user per month basis. 
Whereas with AVD, you have a ton of flexibility in auto scaling, making sure the right VM is on at the right time, make sure it's sized correctly, it's got the right disk type. There's all sorts of auto scaling options to make it cost efficient when running AVD. Whereas with Windows 365, the whole value proposition is it's fixed cost, you know exactly what it will cost and you don't have to worry about scaling it. So let's, let's now take a look at the, the end user experience perspective. So from an end user experience perspective, um, as we talked about, and maybe Dwayne, if you can switch to the next slide for me. Perfect. So the end user experience perspective is very similar just because we, we talked about the AVD being the control plane for both. Uh, there is a different URL you go to to start with, but the look and feel is very similar. So you connect the same way, the user gets the same app and the same experience while they're connected. From a printing and scanning capability, with the enterprise, you have flexibility. You can redirect printers through the AVD or through the Win365 client to do basically easy print redirection. You can use Universal Print, which is a new printing service that Microsoft has released you know, a year or two ago, or you can do network-based printing. So if you have a site-to-site -site VPN, because you control the network, you can set up a gateway and you can print over the VPN to an office printer or to a home printer if there is direct network connectivity. Windows 365 Business, on the other hand, you don't have network control, which means your only option is to print through the client redirection. AVD, as you would expect, all the options are available. Uh, self-service, this is, this is pretty important. So self-service for users on Windows 365 it is actually a thing, meaning you can log into the Windows 365 portal and you can restart your own machine as an end user, which is not something you can natively do with the AVD client. Now, if you're using Nerdio Manager, we have an end user portal that users can log in and manage their own machine, including restarting it. But out of the box, AVD doesn't have a self-service capability for users, whereas Win365 does, and I believe it's gonna grow in terms of what you can do. So restarting the machine, they'll allow resizing machines. In some cases, they may allow reprovisioning them from the kind of the factory default settings. So um, it, it's actually one of those things that's that's got more flexibility in Win365 than in native AVD. And then finally, if we take a look at the licensing and infrastructure cost on the next slide, we can see that from a licensing perspective, you need Windows 10 Enterprise and any subscription that can cover Windows 10 Enterprise, Windows 11 Enterprise will cover uh, Windows 365 and AVD. Now, one nuance here with the business edition, you can buy a version of Windows 365 business called, I forget the exact terms, something like hybrid usage or, or hybrid windows or something like that, where you do not need a separate Windows subscription. You can actually buy the Windows subscription as part of Windows 365. So the name sort of includes the license, it's about $4 extra on top of the base cost, but it's a pretty good deal. If you don't already have a Windows subscription, you can rent Windows as part of Win365 for $4 a month. Pretty good deal. Um, compute and storage covered by the Windows 365 Cloud PC license. That's part of what the license is. It provides you that infrastructure uh, capability. In AVD, you're paying on consumption. So whatever you use at the end of the month, that's gonna be the bill. Networking, we talked about consumption on the AVD side, included with business and consumption on the enterprise side because you are controlling the, uh, the Azure network. Intune required for enterprise, optional for business and optional for AVD. And finally, Office uh, can use any Office subscription because of the single user nature of the product. And then in AVD, it needs to be Office with what's called shared computer activation rights, which is any Office Pro Plus or M365 Business Premium that includes that capability. So that's a sort of the side-by-side -side comparison of the, you know, the technology and the architecture of the two products. Yeah, no, this is great. Um, great to see them side by side. You know, um, I'm seeing scenarios where I can use one or I can use the other one, right? So let's let's jump into pricing. 
and and see um, how they actually stack up against each other. All right, so round three, we're gonna take a look at the pricing. So I know there are a lot of options for for you know Windows 365 and Azure virtual desktop. So instead of us you know looking at all the numbers, let's just take one scenario and take the standard you know user the two uh, virtual CPUs with 8 gigabit RAM and take a look at that and see how the pricing would um, look for 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 um, someone who wanted to yep. use Windows 365 or Azure virtual desktop. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, you know, you can see there are 12 SKUs of Windows 365 here on the left. They cover most common use cases. New SKUs are announced and, and they're going to be coming. So like GPU support, for example, will be available. But let's just focus one line here, right? So as you said, a standard user with two virtual CPUs, eight gigs of RAM, and let's say 128 gigabytes of C drive storage, pretty standard config. That's going to set you uh, $41 for that license of either the enterprise or business, assuming you're bringing your own Windows. If you're gonna include Windows with it, it's gonna be, I think, $45, so like the $4 additional number. But let's just focus on the infrastructure piece of that machine. So two CPUs, eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, 41 bucks. Now, how does that compare to Azure Virtual Desktop? Well. Azure Virtual Desktop, because it's flexible, can have all sorts of ways of, de of deploying it. So let's say you were deploying an Azure Virtual Desktop using the personal desktop model, where each user gets a dedicated machine, and you were making a commitment with something called the reserved instance for three years. In that case, for an equivalently sized infrastructure, you would pay more than Windows 365. And that's in a three-year commitment, meaning in most cases, you would go with either a one-year commitment or a pay-as-you-go, which would be way more expensive, probably you know, 60 or $70 for uh, that type of config. So what you can see is if you are using a dedicated one-per-user machine, Windows 365 is more cost-effective. Now, when you start layering auto-scaling on top of personal desktops, for example, you say, look, I'm, I may give a user a dedicated machine, but they're still only gonna use it you know, 40 hours a week or 50 hours a week, then you can actually save a few bucks. Um, you know, In this case, you would be saving $6 assuming users are working 50 hours per week and assuming you have an auto scaling mechanism that can shut it down when it's not used and only power down when it is used. So there's some savings there, not huge you know, you know, in, the, in, the, in the teens. The picture really changes dramatically when you start looking at pooled deployment. So, you know, we talked about that multi-session scenario that AVD enables that lets you take one VM and split it across multiple users. And if you give users equivalent performance, you can save, you know, 60% plus uh, in a similar scenario with either auto scaling or reservation. So, you know, as we'll see later when we talk about when to choose which, if if multi-session or pooled desktops are a viable option, the cost can be much lower than Windows 365. If personal desktops is what you're looking for, then Windows 365 is likely the right choice. Perfect. So from what I'm seeing, you know, even though we were, you know, we had some fun comparing them side by side and then comparing it, you know, putting it with against each other as competitors. From what I really understand is it's not either or, it's it's more of a um, choose the right one that fits the 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 the, the um you know your your client's needs or, or your customers' needs. Um, there are benefits for each one of them and it really it really is going to come down to knowing your client, knowing your customers um, wants and needs and how they're going to actually end up using, um, you know, either the Windows 365 or Azure best desk, virtual desktop, and then making sure that you supply them with the, the right one that, that's going to suit their business. That's right. Cool. So what we're going to do, we're just going to jump into a little case, um, case uh, use case to see, see um, how we would actually offer you know, either Windows 365 or Azure Virtual Desktop. So let's take um, this case of Jim. So um, the number of virtual desktops may fluctuate throughout the month, uh, requires remote app streaming, and cost is the primary consideration. So we'll just let you guys 
ponder this one for five, 10 seconds. We'll do like a little Jeopardy. And um, we'll, you know, uh, you guys think what you, the answer is, and then we'll go to the next slide. And then the Dean will pretty much explain why the answer is the answer. So um, I can't remember the, the Jeopardy theme song, but all right. So what is the answer? The answer is what is baby D? Perfect. So I'll just go back to the question. So you want to explain why um, you would go with um, virtual uh, virtual desktop for this option yeah yeah so so let me explain it very br briefly here and then i think we have a slide later on where i'll get a bit more detail but you know things like remote app streaming is not even available in windows 365 uh cost is obviously if it's a primary consideration and you can do multi-session deployments avd wins hands down and then also if you have very rapidly fluctuating usage uh, you're better off paying on consumption rather than on monthly licensing. So I think this is a pretty clear uh, case for EVD. Perfect. All right. Case number two, Barbara. Eight desktops needs eight desktops in total. Little to no desktop virtualization expertise. And they're already using Microsoft Endpoint Manager. So um, audience out there, which one would you choose? And let's see if you got this one right. So we'll wait, give you like a few seconds. You're not going to sing this time? I don't know. I think it was. <laughs> I'm good with this one. <laughs> and the answer is Windows 365. All right. So let's go back. Vadim, want to give us a little reason why? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we have a small number of desktops, right? So a pretty small footprint, no VDI experience. So we're really not, not knowing anything about multi-session or or profile encapsulation or FS logics or auto scaling. You know, in, in those cases, Win365 business is really the way to go. There's no configuration required. You just check the box to assign the license to a user and off they go. They can they can work as if it was a physical device. So super simple, no prerequisites um, is almost always going to be Windows 365. Small, simple, no prerequisites is Windows 365. Perfect. Thank you very much for that. So right now we're just going to go about how to pick the right solution. And um, uh, when I saw these slides, um, I thought it was really, really, really amazing uh, what you guys put together about how you go about going through a decision flow. Um, I think it definitely is going to help out a lot of um, our partners and MSPs who are on the call today to figure out what you find. You know what? After having a conversation with my, my client, my customers, um, how to pick the right one. Uh, for them based based on the, the services that, you know, W365 provides and Azure Virtual Desktop. So you want to step us through um, the, the decision flow? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So so this, you know, th this may look like a, a fairly simple slide. I'll walk you through it. But, but to try to figure out how to structure the decision flow was quite a feat. It was uh, it was a big challenge. And, and ho hopefully this will make sense. Uh, to the audience here. But, you know, if you start in the top left, we're go basically going to go, you know, down the line and, and go through various scenarios and then make a decision, hey, are we better off keep going and making our decision or are we better off exiting the flow and, and going with the technology? And all of this should be very intuitive based on everything we spoke about in, in the last, you know, 45, 50 minutes. You know, so if you have less than 10 desktops and no current or planned Azure footprint, then Windows 365 business is the way to go. There is no fixed infrastructure. There is no Active Directory to worry about. There's no Azure to worry about. Simple, easy, small environment, Windows 365 basic. If that's not your scenario, meaning you either have Azure footprint or you have more than 10 desktops or you need a little bit more flexibility, then perhaps let's move on. And then this decision is, is there desktop virtualization experience that's available in the customer or, or, or with the service provider? If not, and Intune is already heavily utilized as the management interface, then it really makes sense to stick to Windows 365. No new skilling required, no new tools to learn. Windows 365 can be managed within Intune um, alongside the physical devices. Most cases, that's going to be enterprise, obviously, not the business version. 
Finally, if you have very powerful kind of power users that need lots of resources, they need their own local admin rights, they need to load their own apps and manage their own machines on their own, and you want to hand it off to them, then Windows 365 is going to be your best bet because it's super easy to give each user a desktop, give them admin rights, and let them do what they need to do. With the caveat is if they're working uh, only a small number of hours per week, then that may be a little more costly than doing it with AVD and then using auto scaling. So the trade-off is going to be the complexity of having to you know, configure auto scaling and things like that versus the simplicity for that additional incremental cost. So those are the easy scenarios where Win365 is the clear choice. Now, if we like we would take a look at the next slide, you know, we're going to have some scenarios where AVD is the clear choice. So imagine you have remote app streaming required. So it's, instead of publishing a full desktop, you may want to publish just an application, whether it, it's QuickBooks or some other app that you want the users to use as an app rather than get a full virtual desktop. Well, you can do that with Windows 365. That's not what it's designed for, which means you will have to go to AVD for that scenario. If the quantity of virtual desktop fluctuates throughout the month, so you may need you know, 10 at the beginning and 40 in the middle and then 30 at the end, in that case, it doesn't make sense to license the maximum number for the entire month because it's going to be costly. And with AVD, you only pay for what you use. So you, you, know, you, pay, you use 10, you pay for 10, you use 30, you pay for 30. So that's going to be an AVD scenario. And finally, if you have a large environment and the management overhead is not a, a big consideration and you really want to optimize the cost structure, then with pooled AVD desktops, they're much cheaper on a per user basis than dedicated Windows 365 cloud PCs. And that's, again, another scenario where AVD would be the clear winner. Perfect. Thank you very much. So we also have this and um, how um, Nerdio manager. So tell us about Nerdio and actually how um, manager for MSPs actually kind of like brings all this together and makes it even more simplified for, for, for our partners. Because of course, you know, going into the Azure portal can be uh, quite complicated and, and, and you know, you have, to, you have to do your scripting and stuff like that if you have to. Um, so sometimes it, it can, be quite messy if, if you don't know where to start. How does Nerdio Manager for MSPs uh, simplify everything? Yeah, definitely be happy to, to tell the audience quickly about Nerdio. So our, our mission in Nerdio is really to empower MSPs to build successful cloud practices in the Microsoft Cloud, specifically around the virtual desktop technology stack. Uh, and, and we do that by helping MSPs price deploy, provision, manage, and optimize their uh, virtual desktop environments in Azure. So our kind of flagship product called Nerdio Manager is a management interface that overlays on top of both AVD and Windows 365 and provides a very unified and simple management interface to do the initial deployment and the scale out of the environment manage it in an ongoing basis. So everything from images to applications, to storage, to servers, really everything that, that the IT environment needs, networking. Uh, so that's ongoing management and then optimize to reduce costs. That means license optimization for Win365 and infrastructure scaling for AVD. So that's really what Nerdio Manager is all about. It provides you a unified management interface on top of these two Microsoft products that make the job just simpler easier and more cost effective because you're paying less in licensing and Azure spend uh, as a result of, of using Nerdio Manager. Cool, perfect. You know, a slide like this doesn't do the product any justice, but um, are you offering demos that our partners can have access to so you can actually show them how the tool actually works in action? Absolutely, yeah, we'll, we'll be happy to do, uh, to do demos of, of the product and you can see how both AVD and Windows 365 uh, would, would actually you know run in the real world and can be managed to Nerdy Manager. So so definitely. All right, cool. So anybody who's on the call today, if you just type in the word demo in the chat, 
We'll make sure that um, Nerdio will be able to reach out to you, show you a great demo of the product, and shows you how it simplifies um, your virtual desktop and Windows 365. So just type in the word demo, D-E-M-O, in the chat um, if you're interested, and then we'll get back to you as quickly as possible. So just to let you know, um, on, on the Share website, we also help you guys out with Azure Virtual Desktop and Windows 365. And you always have the options of doing it. Um, you have three options. So one, you can go ahead, you know, you, you purchase your, your tenant with us and you can go off and do it off on your own. And if you need any help, we're always here to support. Or two, you can actually use the Nerdio tool that we just mentioned to help you, um, you know, provision of the, the environments. And so you can actually make your life easier and simplify the way that you're going to execute this for, for your customers. Um, or also you can leverage our services here at ShareWeb with our professional services. So for example, if you're not sure how to set up your ABD environment, or if you're not sure um, how to set up W365, please take advantage of our professional services. They're here to help. Um, and they, they'll scope out the work with you and, and make sure that it's done uh, professionally. They've been doing it for many years for, for many organizations. So they, you know, please leverage their experience and um, to save you time and, and save you money as well too. So I'm just gonna go to the Q and A. We're only got like two minutes left. Um, so I got a quick question. Um, one question would be, can I upgrade or downgrade my W365 plan? Today you can upgrade, you cannot downgrade as of right now. Uh, it's called a resize in, in the management portal. Um, I'm trying to remember if it's available with business, certainly available with enterprise, uh, but, but no downgrade, upgrade only at this time. Okay, cool. Um, next question, what OS can you run on Azure Virtual Desktop and Win Windows 365? I'm assuming they're asking if um, Windows 11 is available. Yeah, Windows 11, Windows 10 on both, Windows Server uh, 2012 and on 2012 R2 and on, on AVD. Windows 365, only Windows 10 and 11. Okay, perfect. Um, the, the only one last question I would have before we jump off, I think you mentioned it, but um, can I use Windows Hybrid Benefit with Azure uh, Virtual Desktop and Windows 365? With Windows 365, so, so there is Windows Hybrid Benefit and then there is the Azure Hybrid Benefit. Windows Hybrid Benefit is for the Windows 10 11 operating system that can be used. Uh, that, that's a license you purchase with Windows 365. Uh, it doesn't apply as far as I know, unless something changed recently, Microsoft licensing to AVD. It's only a Windows 365 concept. Okay, perfect. So we're at the end of our session, the Dean, I would like to thank you very, very much for, for joining us today. You did open up um, not just my eyes, but I'm sure our partners' eyes to um, you know the benefits of Azure Virtual Desktop and W365. So thank you very much for that. And um, I hope our you know partners and people attending the call take advantage of the demo for Nerdio. I think it's, it's something that they definitely need to see. So thank you very much for joining us today. And um, Nadeem, I'll leave the last words to you before we we, we sure. um, session. Th thanks for having me, Dwayne. This was uh, this was very uh, a very great discussion. Thank you for for inviting me to share uh, with the audience about uh, Windows 365 and AVD. Uh, you can learn more at getnerdio.com. We have lots of uh, resources, you know, education videos, white papers. So anything and everything you want to know about uh, Windows 365 and AVD. You can find there, as Dwayne said, please reach out for a demo. We're happy to do uh, a demo for you as well so you can see this firsthand. And uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Dwayne, sorry, quick uh, quick intervention here. Um, I'm the guy in the background. Uh, we see we have a lot of questions. So just to say, we'll, we will be answering those uh, separately. So don't worry if your answer was not, if your question was not answered, uh, we'll be in touch with you to make sure that you get uh, the answers to your question. But great job, guys, and thank you. Awesome, thanks very much.